Why is Israel attacking Syria? Well, they have been for years, but they have been doing it more in response to the war in Gaza. Kavork Almasian from the Syriana Analysis YouTube channel joins us today to discuss. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Yes, indeed. Now, before we discuss the attacks that started last Friday, can you remind us why Israel has been bombing Syria for years and years and why this is not new? Actually, Israel was trying to bomb Syria for decades. It's not a new phenomenon. However, Syria had strong air defense systems and also had air defense systems in Lebanon. But in 2005, after a mysterious assassination of the former prime minister of Lebanon, Rafiq al-Hariri, all there was a color revolution inside Lebanon, and this led into the removal of the Syrian air defenses from inside Lebanon, because the Lebanese territories uh, were considered a buffer zone between Syria and also Israel. And then when the so-called Syrian revolution started, which is a CIA-engineered insurgency against Syria, the first thing the so-called rebels did when they uh, they took the weapons from uh, the United States, from Pentagon, and from the uh, regional countries, they destroyed the air defense of Syria. So this was a Zionist neocon plan for a long time. They wanted to target Syria to have an upper hand uh, over Syria in order to bomb the Syrian uh, military because the Syrian army is the last uh, pan-Arabist or the last Arab army in the region that poses a threat to Israel. All the neighboring countries, for example, Egypt is an ally of Israel. Jordan is an ally of Israel. In Lebanon, it's divided 50-50. It's only Hezbollah as a non-state actor that is posing a threat to Israel. Therefore, Israel consistently tried to destroy uh, the Syrian army in the past decades and also weaken the pan-Arabist government and replace it with all these insurgents. Because if we remember what the former defense minister of Israel said, uh, Moshe Alon, he said, if I have a choice to choose between the current government in Syria, which is allied with Iran, and ISIS, I would prefer ISIS, he said, mm -hmm. because for him, uh, according to him, of course, uh, that Iran-backed Syria uh, cons is considered a bigger threat to Israel than ISIS, which was eventually going to be crumbled and crushed if the United States and other regional countries join a fight against this terrorist group. So in my opinion, this is about a struggle of power in the region and also killing the Palestinian cause. This attempt for a coup in Syria and regime change in Syria was because of Israel, because Israel wanted to remove Assad from power for uh, because Assad supported the resistance groups in the region, has given them weapons, has given them political and military support. So they wanted to finish on the Palestinian cause by removing Assad from power first, and then uh, a fight against uh, whatever left from the resistance, for example, in Gaza and then in Lebanon. So take this scenario into consideration. If Assad was removed from power, between 2011 and uh, or 2022, 2023, what could have happened to uh, the resistance in Gaza or the resistance in southern Lebanon? They would have eventually crumbled because Syria is considered the route uh, to send weapons from Syria to Hezbollah, and Hezbollah is the one who is smuggling these weapons into Gaza or is training and giving the military experience to the militants or the fighters who want to fight against Israel. Okay, can you expand on that? What is the exact connection between Syria and Hezbollah? Is it official? Is it uh, sanctioned by Bashar al-Assad and his government? Because you mentioned how it sort of bleeds out of Lebanon. The reason Hezbollah exists is to combat Zionism. It was born as a reaction to Israel's invasion of Arabic lands, right? So can you explain that a little bit if we, for those of us who may miss the context? Exactly. In uh, Actually in 1982, when Israel invaded Lebanon uh, and conquered uh, half of the southern Lebanon, there was a resistance against the occupation forces, and this was the spawn of Hezbollah. Syria and Hezbollah, they were not in good terms at the beginning. Uh, and then there was an Iranian uh, mediation between Hezbollah and Syria, and there were uh, other groups together. And since then, the relationship has become from friendly into strategic. This relationship, uh, for example, Syria has given Hezbollah a military experience and also weapons in order to fight against the Israeli occupation forces in southern Lebanon, which led into the liberation of Lebanon in the year 2000. And when uh, Hezbollah pushed away the, or driven away the 
occupation forces from Lebanon, they thanked Syria officially and said this was partially thanks to Syria and Syria's support. And then in 2005, as I mentioned, when uh, the serious assassination of former Rafiq al-Hariri, former Prime Minister of Lebanon, Rafiq al-Hariri happened, Syria has had forces inside Lebanon to create this buffer zone with, uh, with Israel. So this led into the removal of the Syrian forces from Lebanon. However, Syria only removed its forces, but kept its weapons and given most of it, uh, the weapons to Hezbollah. And here, the relationship has become really, really uh, strategic. And between 2005 and 2006, uh, Syria left all these weapons in the hands of Hezbollah. In 2006, Israel invaded Lebanon again, and Hezbollah used the Syrian weapons against the um, Israeli occupation forces. Some of these weapons were from Russia, for example, the Cornet rockets. And the these weapons, uh, the Syrians were a little bit hesitant to give it to Hezbollah because the Russians may not accept uh, because these are meant for Syria. But the Russians were actually very happy because this was a free advertisement for Russian weapons destroying uh, Israeli uh, tanks in southern Lebanon. So since then, in 2006, Syria and uh, Hezbollah have become strategic allies. In 2011, when the CIA waged this regime change war against Syria, Hezbollah fighters came to Syria and the numbers are estimated between 5,000 to 20,000 fighters in Syria and fought against ISIS, against Al-Qaeda, against Al-Nusra and all these franchises of Al-Qaeda affiliated groups. However, now Hezbollah doesn't have big forces in Syria. There are probably a few hundreds of them, just checkpoints. So this recent escalation from the Israeli side and especially in northern Syria, we are speaking about 800 kilometers away from the Israeli borders, this is meant to change the equations in the region. Israel at the moment knows that its war in Gaza is not going well. They are not achieving military victories in the Gaza Strip. They are killing people, but mm -hmm. they are not achieving military victories in the Gaza Strip. However, the other camp, and this, is, this consists of Iran, Syria, Yemen, Hezbollah, and other non-state actors in the region, for example, in Iraq, they are actually giving tangible support to Hamas and Jihad and other groups in, in, in Gaza. And Israel wants to drag the Americans into a conflict in the region because they are unable to achieve the military goals that they have set for themselves. How can they do that? They can do that by dragging Syria into conflict so that there would be a regional war. Or they can do right, that by so dragging... Is it because the Americans have a lasting appetite for war with Syria? Not American people, clearly, but American politicians. Actually, the United States, in this particular attack on Aleppo, the U.S. occupation forces in Syria helped Israel because the Israeli fighter jets, they flew from Israel to Jordan, and from Jordan, they flew over what is called al Tanf border crossing. And if you remember a few weeks ago when the U.S. soldiers came under attack and few soldiers were killed, this is the same exact point, post, where the Americans have technologies to, uh, and jamming technologies. So they jammed against the Syrian air defense systems and the radars, and the Syrians were blinded. So the Americans actually helped Israel to conduct this attack from coming from Jordan to Syria. And from Syria, they flew over the deserts and hit uh, Aleppo, and they killed over 36 uh, soldiers and civilians in this case. So the point was here uh, from the Israeli side that we want retaliation from Syria. This provocation is meant that Syria responds directly and then uh, Israel opens a big front either against Hezbollah or against Syria and this will drag uh, the United States into direct conflict in the region and that's what Netanyahu is craving for and that's what Netanyahu is planning for. It doesn't seem that the Americans have an appetite for that but if they are forced to go into for, uh, into an all-out war, I mean, but what I mean first, I mean that if Israel is an existential threat, they will go to war in the region. I have no doubt about that. That the Biden administration will go for help uh, to help Israel in this regard. You know, that's interesting because soon after October seventh, Hillary Clinton started upping the rhetoric about Hezbollah, and I couldn't figure out why she was making that connection so quickly. So now I can see it why she you know she's giving us a reason to step in almost like she's widening the pool exactly yeah. without without having to say okay we'll go to war you know in the palestinian regions 
Uh, so that is already actively being sold to us. So thank you for breaking that down. Now, you mentioned the Palestinian cause in Syria. Can you tell me what that is? And, and do you really think that these regions are the only regions coming to the assistance of the people of Gaza? Actually, in Syria, it is a principled position. Uh, they have always supported the Palestinian cause uh, since 1948, and they went to war against uh, uh, Israel or rejected to sign what they call in Syria surrender deals, because Americans offered many, many uh, compromises to the Syrians, and they said to the Syrians that they are going to be uh, lifting of sanctions, and Syria is going to be accepted in quote-unquote international community, Syria is going to receive huge investments, and Syria will be accepted by uh, by the entire Western world only if Syria signs on a so-called peace treaty with Israel. But this peace treaty pushes the Palestinians under the bus because from the Syrian perspective, in 1948, there was an Akba and hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were displaced and forcefully displaced into the neighboring countries. These Palestinians have the right to go back to their homes. This is the right of return. And secondly, Syria doesn't compromise over the territories. The Israelis say, oh, we have been occupying your land for 60 years for 70 years let's forget about that we give you a territory somewhere else you know <laughs> and, right. and the Syrians are like no this is the Golan Heights for example this is very strategic for us there is gas and oil beneath the Golan Heights and there is water in the Golan Heights you're occupying our land as, as much as you try to ethnically cleanse and change the demographics of the region this is going to uh, belong to us and Every single UN Security Council resolution affirms that. So Syria uh, supported the Palestinians, for example, who are in Syria, and they treated them as equal citizens. And uh, Palestinians had the right to work, had the right to own a uh, house, own a territory, unlike in other places who they are uh, not even allowed to work. For example, in Lebanon, their situation is very, very dire. And in Syria, uh, up until 2011, many Palestinian uh, factions had official headquarters in, uh, in in Damascus. And they had very good relationship with the Damascus government. And in 2003, when Colin Powell came to Syria after the invasion of Iraq, and he said, Bashar al-Assad, here are our demands. Now we removed uh, Saddam from power. The turn is coming to you if you don't follow our dictates. And the list was one, you have to close the, Palest the offices of the Palestinian factions in Damascus. You have to severe your ties with Hezbollah, and you have to severe your ties with Iran. There was no mention about democracy, human rights, democratic change, or constitution, etc., etc. They just wanted for Assad to become uh, an American-friendly country. But when they lost their hope after so many attempts, that's when they waged this regime change war against Syria. And the scenario is the following. If Assad falls, then all these ISIS and Nusra terrorists are going to go to Lebanon to fight against Hezbollah. So they were going to do the fight for Israel, basically, in Lebanon. And when I used to be in Lebanon in 2012, between 2012 and 2015, there were many car bombs coming from ISIS inside the areas that is, that is considered controlled by Hezbollah. So they were killing uh, Hezbollah people inside Lebanon, and they were doing the bidding of Israel. And ironically, all these ISIS and Nusra elements now are activated in Syria when the Americans want to put pressure on Syria because Syria is helping the Palestinians. So we have to minimize that support to the Palestinians. They activate these ISIS and Al-Qaeda cells inside Syria and these Al-Qaeda cells wage attacks against the Syrian army and simultaneously the Israelis attack on, uh, on, on the Syrian army position. On this exact attack in Aleppo, the same moment when the Israelis were bombing Aleppo, I'm talking about a matter of minutes, the same moment when the Israelis were bombing Syrian army positions in um, uh, eastern Aleppo, Al-Qaeda uh, fighters, they were waging drone attacks on Aleppo as well. So what the Israelis tried to do in this regard, they wanted to crumble the fortifications of the Syrian army in Aleppo so that the uh, al-Nusra and al-Qaeda uh, terrorists can advance inside Aleppo. So what Israel is actually telling to Syria, if you don't stop helping the Palestinians and the resistance against us, we're going to bomb your army and the, on the front lines with al-Qaeda and al-Nusra so that this Nusra 
terrorists can advance inside Aleppo again, and Aleppo is a strategic city that they were uh, tens of thousands of casualties before it was liberated, right? And it yes. was a huge, huge war. So this is the exact message that, that Israel is sending in this regard. And people need to know that uh, Nusra, Qaeda are assets for the United States. Yes, it is. It's not Has me who's saying this. No, the, it's that easy. The to U.S. Yeah. special, the former uh, U.S. special envoy to Syria, his name is Jeffrey. He said that Nusra is our asset in 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 Syria, and it was yes. also mentioned in the emails of uh, Hillary Clinton uh, with Jake Sullivan in 2012 that Al Qaeda is on our side in Syria, and this was leaked by WikiLeaks, right? So we all know yeah. that the Americans and that's where are in Obama bed. started to sell us the concept of moderates that we arm moderates, <laughs> right? They're extremists, they're Al Qaeda linked, but we called them moderates in order to sell ourselves this superiority. So. Um, thank you so much for this context. I think that it's important to pay attention so that anyone who's an American who's being drawn into a war with Israel or alongside Israel with Syria can say, actually, I don't want that. So uh, I appreciate that. You can follow Kavork on Syriana Analysis on his YouTube channel as well as on X. It's Kavork Almasian. So thank you again for your time. Thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.